button. Welcome back to Lizard of Doom. I am Max. If you haven't seen this before, lucky you, but welcome to the channel. I am smack bang in the middle of my Chaos Knight series. I am getting them ready for a diorama, something I haven't worked on the actual diorama bit yet, but I'm churning through these knights. A little announcement-ish before we get into it. I am away next week, travelling up north, so I won't be able to film, so I'm trying to film two videos in one week, which is a hell of a push for me. So I'm going to bring you two decent videos, that's four, two decent videos on one night, rather than a crap video on all of them, or not put out a video for a week, because I'm in the early stages of YouTube, and consistency is very important that I put out a video a week at the moment. Let's get into the metal of these nights then. I sprayed them Rune Lord Blast. I sprayed them Rune Lord Bla Blast. Blast! I sprayed them Lune Lord Lord. I sprayed them Lune. No. <laughs> I sprayed them Rune Lord Brass in my priming video a couple of videos ago, and that's where the metal sat from then till now. It's time to take that to the next level and I will be playing catch up off camera, getting the rest of the nights to this standard while I am away. Like and subscribe, especially subscribe because I'm nearing a thousand now. And let's get into it. This is where we left our night. All of the armor panels done, none of the metal. Still sprayed primed Rune Lord Brass. And this is what we're aiming for. Some lovely little muzzle burns and some nice dirty brass and some dark, dark steel. I've got a long way to go, as you can see. The back is just completely this Rune Lord brass. Everything he's doing on there. There is a lot of metal to get through. The metals I'll be using are Pro Acryl. I find the coverage lovely. They don't need much thinning at all. Just a tiny drop of water and they flow really well. The rest of these knights, as I said earlier, will have to wait for the future to get their metal done. But for now, let's get on with our chosen boy. The first colour I'll be using today is the Dark Silver from Pro Acryl. It is kind of a bluey tinge, which I thought would be a nice offset against the orange on the models. Blue and orange are contrasting colours, and this will give the models a little bit of pop. I started with a War Dog just to make sure I wasn't going mental, and this was a good idea. As you can see, it goes on lovely and the dark colour covers in one coat. This is why I love Pro Acryls. I've heard good stuff about Vallejo liquid metals as well, but my metallic of choice is Pro Acryl. I had to be very, very careful not to hit anything that was meant to be brass because it sprayed this colour. I find that when you spray something a colour, even if you've got the matching pot of paint to touch up afterwards, it's never the same colour. So I was very, very careful to have good brush control and not hit anything that was going to be brass or anything that I'd painted, for instance, the arm plating on it. The teeth on the chainsaw are, I've got to say, a little bit annoying to paint and all but one for the chainsaw. So moving forward, um, maybe I make armies with less chainsaws. With my heart set on this nice dark silver colour, I then thought it was time to move on to the big boy himself, after a nice little reveal of what this war dog looks like with all his metal painted in. I think this has worked very well, the nice dark steel has broken up the very light and bright colours on this model. It's added a sense of depth to areas where there wasn't before, and it's definitely added a kind of dark flavour that this model was missing. Especially on the shot of the back plate here, you can see how much it breaks up that brass blur that we were having a bit of an issue with when we had a look at the back of the Big Knight earlier. And the claws as well look lovely. Time to move on. I didn't think you needed to see me just laying down this paint again, so I, off camera, I quickly got it done. And now we can cut straight to the reveal of the big boy in all his glory with this nice kind of breaking up of his light, light metals with my new dark, dark silver. Sheesh! Look at this guy. He's looking a lot more painted now, just for this one coat of metal. All the details starting to stand out and it's not lost on the model. It's sometimes quite hard to pick out which bits you want which metal. I find a two metal approach works well, as I've stated in my giving 100% on your characters video. My first ever upload actually. One metal for functionality, one metal for kind of display purposes, so anything fancy. Look at the state of my water after this. It's nearly black. This silver is very, very dark. You can't really see the metallic pigment in there as well, which is unusual. Ah, there it is. It's all at the bottom. The next step 
is washes. It may not be trendy, it may not be popular at the moment. I know the style at the moment is doing anything but, like oil washes or streaking grime. We'll get to streaking grime, a couple of videos time. But washes are a solid product. I know the main complaint about them is that they wash out your colors. I'm trying to do that here. My metallic brass is way too light for my liking. I wanna make it look like dingy brass color, like an old trombone. So washes it is. If you say you have never used Nuln Oil or Agrax Earthshade, you sir are a liar. Everyone has had them in their collection at one point. Nuln Oil on the steel bits, and then the Agrax is obviously for all the brass. So I slapped it all over these metallics, being careful not to let it pull too much. I actually let it go slightly over the edges of every panel and every little bit I was painting to create separation between the bits of metal and the things that are on. One of the issues with my orange paintwork on this model so far is that it laps right up to the edge of these armor panels. And where I put the Agrax Earthshade, slightly over the edge, just not onto the orange, just in that little crack, kind of like panel lining, it really separated these. And that makes the armor panel stand out a lot, lot more. I did indeed actually use the Agrax Earthshade as panel lining in between all the panels on the top plates and the little crack in between these two plates on the shoulder panel. There we go, nice finished look looking very dirty and it's time to do the rest of the model in this. In the last video, I started to discuss a little bit of lore for these guys, why they're painted like this and what's going on. I had really good feedback on that, a couple of nice comments saying love the lore section, so I'm going to continue that with a, a couple of minutes of lore in each video moving forwards. So let's cut back to the footage of me slapping that wash on and I'll tell you a bit about the vultures. The vultures are a tribe of scrappers, forgotten by the Imperium, remnants of a hive city, the last of their people. They harass the Imperium in small junk ships and find new targets nearly every month to take what they need from. A small junk ship containing a ragtag crew of morons, really, idiots, landed at a hangar that one of them has scouted. Seeing fancy blokes going in and out, they thought, nah, maybe there's something in there. When they managed to pop a hatch on the roof and drop down in in the dead of night, oh, there was something in there. Before them they saw three towering machines and a few smaller ones stood around their feet. One of them jimmied the top hatch with one of their special space screwdrivers and dropped into the seat. Trying to steal whatever wasn't bolted down, he accidentally set off the neural hyperlink, whatever, the brain plug, the matrix thing that controls these boys, and it connected to him. Within seconds he was dead. He was fried in the chair he sat in, but the rest of the boys looked at each other. The machine had turned on. After a few more dead scrappers, they finally got the hang of things. Imperial lords and nobles that are strong of mind are the only ones that can pilot these machines. Bollocks. That's propaganda. The Imperium's favourite hobby. After firing up the machines, they burst through the hangar door and rampaged out across the desert. Not a lot can chase down a knight, especially if you're not expecting it to be stolen. Any pursuit that was given was easily quashed with their newfound power and they took these machines off-world back to their planet, ready to be used as industrial processing machines rather than the big war engines they once were. Because scrapping is all they know. Here is a side-by-side -side shot of before and after doing this on the body. I really like the chaos symbol on the chest, pops a lot more, a lot more defined. This was a good choice, I believe. I know not everyone likes the wash, but it really, brings out this model. I had to mix a mid colour for the highlights. I've got my dark silver and my normal silver from Pro Acryl. I don't have anything in between, so I went for a roughly 50-50 mix on my wet palette here to make a mid highlight colour. I don't normally like mixing paints because I find I can never make the same paint twice, but you can't go wrong with a roughly 50-50 mix. So I tested it here on the wet palette to make sure it was a decent highlight colour. I think it's good. Let's keep going. Whee! I will be dry brushing with this colour all over the steel bits and I'll be using my lovely makeup brushes. I got these from one of the bargain shops, there's many in the UK. Uh, I think it was like two quid, three quid for all of these brushes and they are better than my Citadel and Army Painter brushes that I've got for dry brushing. Look at all these different sizes I got for that cheap. I've got this nice big one. They're all lovely soft bristles, lovely, very absorbent. And this one's the one I'll be using. It's got a nice shape to it, a nice flat, sharp edge, so you can get a good amount of detail. 
So this is when I started to transition into a robot. As this goes on, you'll see my hand becomes more and more metal because I'm one of them weirdos that likes to use himself as a palette. I find I can feel when I've got the right amount of paint on my brush through some kind of paint sense. I guess it's like a spidey sense for paint moisture. That's a very niche skill. I'm just trying to catch raised edges and bits will be scuffed to give an idea of wear on this nice dark steel. I did hit every bit of steel I'd done with this, which was quite a bit to be fair, and I built up colour on the top of the gun barrel to give it a nice kind of metallic zenithal feel. In some areas I stippled when I felt it was necessary, like on the hood around his head. I couldn't really get the dry brush in there to give it a good whack, so I poked it about a bit. The next highlight is just the silver on itself. This is a lovely, lovely bright paint, so I didn't want to use too much at all. This is the highlight that I did with the mixed colour, and then this is a highlight with the silver. You can see the kind of step up it is. So just very, very fine edges and very small amounts. This just brings those nice crispy lines back to the edge of the metallics and make them stand out in amongst the dirt and grime that I've put on them with the null oil. I hit the edges like this in this ammo canister to make the top corner shine and this is what this boy looks like now. I've got all of the iron bits done and it's time to move on to the brass. Yeah, looking good. You can see the back is starting to pop a lot more now. It was just pure light brass and now we've got it looking where you can see kind of some of the detail starting to come through there. There's a lot more to be done in the future and that will be done in my fine details video which is next week which I'll be filming this week, straight after this one. Back to back, no sleep week, baby. Right, mental breakdowns aside, time to get on with the rest. For the brass, the brass color and pro acryl I've got is not brighter than the brass that's on there at the moment. So I need to mix another highlight here. I'm only gonna do one step highlight because I want the brass to be a bit dirtier and I don't want to start stepping too much into the gold territory because I will be doing some oxidizing effects on this in the future. I mixed the silver in with the brass colour and I also did a test with some gold. I know I just said I don't want to step too much into the gold territory, but I thought this bright gold will give it a nice kind of zing compared to the drabness of the silver. As you can see on this comparison to the colour of the model, I was right. It's not much brighter than the brass on there at the moment, but it's enough to give it its shine back. You can see I started to turn into a gold robot this time as I progressed with the dry brushing. A bit of a different technique this time. I did put it down a little bit more because I wasn't doing a higher highlight than this and just left the dirty Agrax Earthshade in the cracks and crevices. You can see on the shoulder piece when I dry brush it, the shine starts to come back, giving it a new lease of life. And I know this is gonna be a dirty, dirty robot in the future, but it needs its highlights. With the color coming back through on this brass, starting to look like the dirty trombone that I described earlier. Is dirty trombone a thing? I'm kind of afraid to put that in Urban Dictionary. Yes, I call this metallic effect the dirty trombone. You can see the difference between this chainsaw arm that I haven't touched with the dry brush yet and this gun arm that I have. There is a lot more colour to this. I find there's a lot of difference between the trim around this chainsaw blade and the trim around this gun shield. A nice little bit of shine. Another lovely comparison is this leg. You can see the top of this leg here is lovely and shiny compared to this dusty, dirty one. Another comparison I'd like to have a look at right now is the new legs compared to a set of legs I haven't done this on yet. Look how far we have come. It's barely recognizable as the same paint job at the moment from, from the back shot at least. Back shot. This has been a very simple step and it's something all beginners can do, I believe. It's very simple, it's very quick compared to edge highlighting and it's effective. Just look at this. The next thing is something you've seen in the thumbnail and it is the muzzle burn. This is gonna be my first time ever attempting a muzzle burn. I'm gonna be putting it along the gun barrel and the exhaust. Wish me luck, I, uh, this is kind of by ear this. Someone commented last time saying, I like your kind of wing it style. Believe me, I am winging it. Everything I do is kind of off the dome in the moment. I have a rough plan, but it's more like guidelines. Let's see. The first step is this Fugan orange wash. Yep, back to washes everyone. That's the majority of this video. That will be followed by Drucci Violet as the mid step on our muzzle burn. And after that, we'll be moving to Drakenhof Knight. 
and this is a very old paint. I hope it works. Peep the black lid on the top there. Uh, yeah, they don't make them no more. They haven't done for about five or six years. Okay, now I think what I want to do here is use this nice soft brush, but not as a dry brush. Dry brushing shade seems a bit counterproductive to me, a very wet paint. We're going to go about halfway down the barrel here, and I think I'm going to use this in kind of a stippling motion, just tapping it on like that, building up layer by layer. Maybe two or three coats. Get quite a bit off on the palette here and just start to kind of fade it in. I started light and then started to layer up and it started to build up this nice orangey gradient. As you can see here, this is the first coat. Uh, now it's very important to let it dry because if you don't let it dry, you'll just be taking the wash back off when you try and go in for a second coat. Believe me, I know because I messed it up. The exhausts were much nicer. I think I started a bit too high. I should have started lower and that does affect the end result, but to be honest, in my opinion, the end result on the exhaust is nicer than the gun. First coat of that done. After a couple more coats, we've got this nice gradient up to bright orange on the exhaust there, and also on the gun. The gun seemed to take one more coat than the exhaust every time. I don't know if that's because there is quite a lot of nice detail on the exhaust, so you don't really need as much colour because your eye is drawn by other things. But the gun, a nice smooth barrel, did need more coats to get that colour to pop. The next step was the purple wash and I started stippling that after the orange was dry. I started stippling it slightly overlapping the orange to start with and with subsequent coats moving further and further from the orange. Again it was two coats on the exhaust and three on the gun. This is when I started to realise how far up the exhaust I really was but it was making a nice kind of pinky colour where the orange and purple interacted in the middle and it was really starting to sell this muzzle burn. Purple done, orange done. The transition on the exhaust is a lot smoother than on the gun. This is the first time I have ever tried this. Have a mess around with it at home. Maybe you can get a smoother transition. I think maybe I was just a bit too impatient and I was putting down too much paint. I should have just done less paint and more layers. Uh, I will be doing this on other models and I'll let you know if I perfect it in that time. The exhaust looking pretty sweet here. And the gun, mm, passable. Right. Next one, blue. Same steps again with the blue leading up to the end of the muzzle and overlapping the purple on the first layer or two. With the exhaust, I could really only do the tippy top of the exhaust here because that's all I had left because I started way too high up. But I didn't mind it. I kind of preferred it. Maybe less is more with the blue. I don't know. Let me know if you mess around with this at home and tell me if you think that's correct or not. Right, I am, I am happy for this. With a very first attempt at muzzle burn, yeah, sound, this is really good. Leave a comment down below if you know a better way or you think this is one of the best ways to do this without an airbrush. I think with an airbrush, you could probably get a lot smoother transitions than this. For someone who doesn't have an airbrush, hey, give it a go. Now let's have a look at the exhaust. Dear God, it looks like a puddle full of petrol. I love the kind of rainbow effect and it really sells that this has been hot, hot, hot. It's very boy racer and I'm kind of into it. The transition is lovely, the blue to purple then goes to kind of a pink, then back to the orange. I didn't use any pink, but it made its own pink. Thank you for joining me on this journey with these Chaos Knights. Before I do the nice little reveal at the end, people have probably already skipped past this, but if you're here, hey, leave a little like. Thank you for joining me on this journey with these Chaos Knights. The next video will be the detailing, like the wires, the lenses, little bits like that really, little bits of material that are hanging about. Everything that's not kind of its own thing. Skulls, helmets on some of them of like fallen enemies. Just bits that are kind of finicky, but add a lot to the model. I'm really glad you've watched this far if you have watched the whole thing. Really, thank you. I need the watch time. Let's get into the final reveal then, shall we? The bit everyone's been waiting for. If you have found this useful, please remember to subscribe. I am closing in on a thousand subscribers and that is very exciting for me. That is one of the requirements on YouTube to start getting paid for your work. I am 100% committed to this channel and I would love to make this my career. The other thing is I need 4,000 hours watch time. So if you fancy watching another video, be my guest. Or possibly the playlist. If you haven't seen, this is part of a Chaos Knight Diorama series. I'm like four or five videos deep in it now. So if you check the channel, there is a playlist of how I've got to the point I am at now. I'm gonna let this play out, be a pal, like and subscribe, and remember, 
It's not a pile of shame, it's a pile of future fun.